Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Well, blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me on the Word Podcast. This is episode number 365. Isn't that crazy? And so that's a year's worth right there. And so if you're just now joining with us, you can go back and in various ways, you can check it out on the website. You can uh, pick up the Podbean app for iPhone or Android, either one, and for a tablet or whatever. And you can go, and I have put them in a little bit of an order if we've been going along. Sometimes I just have miscellaneous ideas and thoughts that we're examining. But of late, for instance, we've been looking at Second Peter. So you can sort of click right there and see where Second Peter is and sort of scroll through and and start at the beginning. Uh, or you can start at the beginning of all of them and catch up, okay? You can do it. Uh, as you know by now, most of these things are under 10 minutes. So we're looking at Second Peter chapter 3. And uh, we are taking our time a little bit in relationship to this, but not a lot because there's just so much being said here. Remember what he was saying to them. Hey, I'm writing these two letters to you to remind you to remember the words of the prophets and the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and to know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will mock, scoffers will scoff, and they're going to be following after their own lust. And then he gave an example. He said, they're going to be saying this, where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. Well, then he gave a couple of examples of showing how that's not true. He said, when they are willingly ignorant of this, they willingly ignore the fact that by the word of God, the heavens existed, that he created everything. By the word of God, the earth was formed. By the word of God, that the uh, earth was destroyed by water. We saw last episode that by the word of God, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire. So that whole thing of being reserved for fire, which I didn't bring this point out last time, but I will now, uh, it's still answering that question back there. Where's the promise of his coming? Okay, where's the promise of his coming? And it's like, why are you so anticipating his coming when you are ungodly people, you're mockers and you're scoffers, and you're going to be judged by fire? It brings more impetus to verse 8 when he says, but do not be ignorant of this fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. So don't sit there and be mocking and listen to these mockers and these scoffers that are making fun of this, saying, no, the Lord's never going to do this. He's never going to do that. He's the one who spoke it into existence. He's the one who judged it the first time. And if it's a thousand years from now, if it's 10 million years from now, it's still going to occur as the Lord says that it will be. So don't doubt the word of the Lord. So let's continue with verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise. Well, what's his promise? The promise is the judgment he's talking about right there. Okay. He's not slack, is how the authorized version says it, okay? He's not slow to fulfill these things, as some count slowness. <coughs> but he's patient toward you, not wishing for anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And boy, that opens up a whole can of worms and things that we're not going to get into right now. It's really not a can of worms. It's just a can of truth, okay? And people don't want to look in the Scripture. They don't want to understand the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. They don't want to understand the balance of all that the Lord says about salvation and repentance and how, uh, who he calls and selects and elects and predestines. The truth is, is right here that he is not wishing for any to perish, but he desires for all to come to repentance. Well, of course, a scoffer and a mocker will say, well, if he desires for all to come to repentance, then why haven't all repented and why haven't all come to him? And that just proves that he isn't much of a God. Can't you just hear him saying that? <laughs> you know? And he's going, no, 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 no. That's not at all what he's talking about right here. That's not. He says the idea is that he is going to fulfill his promise. He's not slow in any way. Now, watch this. Verse 9, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. So that tells us what this judgment thing is that he's talking about earlier in verse 8. And uh, uh, 10,000 years, 1,000 years, day, et cetera, et cetera. It's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works 
will be burned up. Boy, there's some serious, serious truths right here for us to see, okay? Peter is saying the day of the Lord, and this is the day of God's wrath. This is not, as I say over and over, the great tribulation. The day of the Lord is God's wrath being poured out upon unbelieving, ungodly man. The great tribulation is the wrath of Satan being poured out upon the Jews and upon the church. So here Peter is telling us that they Lord will come like a thief. Paul tells the church at Thessalonians, the Thessalonians the same way. For you yourself know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief. Okay? Now what's interesting, people say, well, we won't know when the Lord is coming. No, if you read the rest of the uh, Thessalonian letters, which we covered a while back, you find out that we are not in darkness. Yes, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night to the world, but it will not come that way to us. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the season, and we will know the season because Jesus said we would know the season. Uh, Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse in Luke 21, he says, when you see these things occur, when you see all this happening, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. The idea of we've been crouching down, been laying low, waiting for this to happen. And then when we see all these things, and he's talking about the sun, moon, and stars and everything going dark there, uh, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. And so the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. But then in Thessalonians, we see that we are not as those in darkness. We are in the light. I love what happens here in Second Peter, though. He gives quite a detailed understanding about what's going to happen. Look at verse 10 again. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. So first of all, it's going to come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar. And that's what you see. You see it in uh, uh, Revelation 6. You see it in Jesus' Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, where the sun, moon, and stars will go dark. There's going to be cosmic disturbances. The heavens will pass away. And then the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. Well, what elements? Well, the very elemental nature of the earth. We're not talking about annihilation. When you see what all the Lord does, when he brings down 100-pound hailstones of fire, when he brings forth all this stuff and all these things that are going to occur, the earth isn't annihilated, but boy, it is purged. You know, you can wash something with water and clean it, which he did the first time. And then if you really want to clean it and purge it, you do it with fire, which he's going to the second time. So the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. You see in the scripture also that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, which is just a really wild thing. So all this relate, relates to what uh, Peter was saying about these mockers and these scoffers are going to be coming along and saying, hey, oh, well, when's this coming again? Because ever since the beginning of creation, everything's continued just as it was. And he said, oh, no, it hasn't. And it's not going to. Okay? It's not going to at all. And he's giving example after example. Tell you what, I think we do well to really, really internalize these truths right here. And so before you lay down upon your nightbed this evening, go and read through Second Peter, first two chapters. I mean, read the whole book in a, in a matter of minutes, okay? But give close heed to what he's saying is going to occur right here. Again, I'm Dale, and I thank you uh, for a year so far. We'll start the new year next time. Goodbye.